Hello, Tom Levecchia here with the latest edition of the New Theory Podcast. We appreciate the increased listenership, including our nine-part series with John Panisi, former main member of the Lucchese family. And stay tuned because we're going to be doing some of a spin-off there. But we truck along with New Theory by having guests from like eclectic backgrounds. And the truth of the matter is we have very uh, different and varied guests on the show. And the truth is that find the commonality and unpack their success. And this next guest is no exception. Ralph Dibignato, I say it in Italian. Yeah. Uh, Ralph Bug uh, joins the podcast today. Now he is a return guest, very few of them. And he was on about two and a half years ago. And yeah. we went through his arc of kind of raising really high, getting crushed in the crisis of real estate, making his way back. Ralph, welcome to New Theory Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back on. Um, I'm a fan of the show, so it's, it's, good, it's good to be on as a guest, but I listen regularly as a fan, so it's, it's both. And, and now we have a, a microphone, we got a green screen, we actually, <laughs> we actually have subs, so yeah, so so welcome back, Ralph, I'm glad, happy to have you. So, okay, so, so I want to, I wanna, and, and Ralph's a friend, I know Ralph for a while, but I want to kind of pick off. So so you got, you got crushed, came back, got back into real estate, and I want to say, let, let, let maybe take us about two years ago and then you kind of a got deep into real estate but b got in kind of the mentorship route so walk us through like your progression and love to hear your updates yeah so um you know mortgages and real estate has been a good place to be this year so I, i'm still um you know my main function was always mortgage but i'm on the real estate side so i have a couple of real estate franchises but the mortgage business was great this year because rates were low the last two years have been unbelievable and um I'm running, a, I'm running a, a franchise model for a company by the name of Caldwell Financial. They're a top 10 lender in the country. They're in 50 states. I'm really concentrated on the Northeast. Um, I have about 40 offices now for them. And oh, wow. my, my group did about $2 billion this year in business. So, um, and some of it is technology and new systems and some of it was the market. And, uh, you know, when the pandemic happened um, and, and everything kind of went through COVID in February, March, I really thought that the business was going to fall off a cliff. Like I was prepared. I was sitting at my desk. I was like, this is it. This is the end. And, you know, we'll see what happens in six months. And real estate went really the complete opposite way. It became a feeding frenzy. So I've been, um, you know, riding that wave a little bit this year. And it's a different market, but that's kind of what's currently going on right now. It's been it's been crazy between mortgage and real estate over the last, like, you know, 12 to 16 months. Interesting. You got to stop talking. Every time you talk to me, things go bad and then they get better. I don't know. Hopefully, I know. Part, of the, I'm part of the good and not the bad. But I, I, I always love how you pivot. You always stay in the game. You're always like grinding. Like it's fun. To, he's one of those guys that like you. He does well, right? And then you're like, wait, I saw him before. And he was on CBS or he was on Instagram, you know, whatever. And like you realize, oh shit, that's him. But he's always been there. Like you know what I mean? Like so that's one of the things. Like we're, we're, we, I don't want to gloss over a lot of this stuff, but this guy hustles. So so you have your hands. I want to make sure I, I filter this correctly, Ralph. In three pots, you have the real estate end. You got involved with the lending. And then now you're doing some media, correct? Correct. Yeah, that's it. You're exactly on the money. Yeah, for sure. So, um, Caldwell Financials is the mortgage company. Um, uh, my real estate company is Home Qualified, um, and that's HomeQualified.com. It was a real estate news website, but I have real estate franchises through there now. And then my media is really Disruptors Network or the Real Estate Disruptor, um, and that's really become my community-based business slash my media company where um, we're producing all the content from. Okay. And so, all right, be frank, because I love, love Ralph. Here's what I like about Ralph, and here's what I hate about everybody else, okay? I meet people all the time. They get a, a few followers on Instagram, but they want to do this, they want to do that. And all of a sudden, they're a teacher, or they're an influencer, or they're a disruptor. And like, they get away from what they do, and then like they don't sell houses anymore, or they don't lend, or they don't whatever. One thing I like about Ralph is there's two parts. Number one, he's still freaking doing it, okay? He's still doing it, he's doing it well, and he has like two different streams of income, right? And then number two, he's like, hey, listen, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it, but again, I'm still doing it. And I and I love that, I love that about what you're doing. So before we kind of get, in, and, and I wanna touch each of the silos, how are you spending your time? Because I, I myself, I have two businesses. Well, really three if you count the podcast. Not that it's a business, but it, it's, it keeps you busy enough. So I keep my hats in a few different areas and because I diversified, I got through COVID, right? Um, and it's, you know, when you have a cash cow, you spend less time. And if you have something exciting, you spend more time. But, you know, COVID threw everything off. So how are you spending your time before COVID? And then how are you spending your time now? 
So it, it definitely changed things. And for me, I feel like it changed things for the better for the most part, because before COVID, I was, I was, you know, we were doing a lot of live events through real estate disruptor and that was a, a networking thing. And I was running around a lot to try to grow the business. And when COVID happened, everything went virtual, right? So everything went to zoom and, and this and that. So I really spent 90% of my time in one office and my water space and I'm there every single day and, and I'm able to run all my businesses from there. And I have all my teams there and I don't really have to leave the office anymore. So COVID really changed my world. And, and I was, I've been listening to a bunch of podcasts and I think this digital virtual world was going this way anyway, but this, this whole thing sped the process up a hundred, a hundred times. And that will all happen in one year. So I, most of my time is spent in one office. And um, so I did a couple of things this year that was good. And again, the mortgages is daily and I'm always doing that. The real estate is daily. And I'm always doing that, but you know, we, we went through a lot of kind of waves in the last year between COVID and, you know, between George Floyd this summer and the protesting and all that stuff. And, and I kind of got, um, I got stuck. Like, you know, I didn't, I didn't know where to contribute. I was bothered by the whole thing, but I didn't know how to kind of get myself involved. And yeah. I don't think for somebody like me, protesting was the best use of my time. I don't think I can help people protesting. So when I said real estate disruptor was a community based business, one of the things I got into was, all right, so what I'm going to do is I think that everybody has an opportunity in this country to do whatever they want. I really truly believe that. Right. So I want to give people opportunities that haven't had the opportunities that, are, that are younger kids, or whatever reason has been a, a block for them. Yeah. So I started the scholarship. I called the generation disruptor. Yeah. I picked four, four people to get either their real estate license or their mortgage license. And I put them through this, this, this four month internship program. Wow. Uh, and, yeah. So I, I, I you know, it, so, and I, and I just kind of was like, I'm going to do this. And I went and did it. The idea wasn't fully formed, right? So I just went and did it. And we, we, had, we had a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. And dealing with the new generation of, of thinking, uh, you have youth, have younger people thinking stuff like that is something I have to adapt to also. But out of that, I really decided that I'm, on a, I'm turning that into an academy now um, where I'm going to do it continuously. And, and, I, and it's going to be twofold. I'm not a saint and I'm not just doing it for that, but I, I really want to train people in the business the right way to, to have people doing business the right way. So it's really become my passion project, but it's something we're kind of working on daily. And now we're building a show around it called Disruptors Network, where I'm really going to have real disrupt, real people, I think, that are entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs that disrupt their, their business, whatever it is. But I want them to have real backstories. And yeah. you said it, um, you were like, you know, people become influencers and they stop doing their job. I want the people who have real substance who are still doing their job and they want to, they can show people the way. So the show's going to be streaming on Amazon, Roku, um, Apple TV, and YouTube TV. And it's going to really showcase entrepreneurs who are making a difference. Like I'm trying to make a difference with the, with the Academy. Nice. So, so what has been, what has been, you know, cause you are, you are, and there's a ton of content and I'll put links below um, for people to follow and check out your content. But what's your biggest learning from COVID? Obviously, you're, you're a pivoter, which I love. So we know that you know you're a pivoter, so you know you have to pivot. But when do you know when to pivot? Like that's that's the hard part. Good question. So um, I think you learned that from failing a little bit, and I failed a lot like, in that situation. But you know, when when February and March came along and everything was kind of up in the air, and believe it or not, the mortgage business and real estate kind of went through a two month little bit of a crisis where. Lending was drying up and the money wasn't available. And it really felt a lot like to me, like 2007, 2008. I was like, all right, we're going to have a little bit. And what I said is that I can't make the same mistakes that I made the first time. And the first time it happened, I kept working, but I kind of froze. I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Like I kind of like froze. And I said, I had a meeting with my staff. I I don't forget the day before the lockdown, I had a meeting with my staff and I said, we just have to keep moving forward. Whatever we're doing, it may be slow, but we just have to get up and work every single day, however we're working, wherever we're working from, and keep doing the same thing um, until we until it becomes a clearer picture of what's next. And, and, and like, thankfully, it never stopped. It kind of just kept, it, it was worse, and then it kept getting better and better and better. But I think the biggest thing I, I learned is that just keep moving forward until your pivot really reveals itself. And it will at some point reveal itself to you. And I think it revealed itself to me in that I think that virtual lending and virtual selling and virtual for real estate is becoming the next thing. So my pivot now is that I brought a lot of my staff in house and they've become relationship managers where they're doing everything virtually for the most part, except open houses where they're prospecting clients virtually and they're prospecting referral sources virtually through social media. 
So everything is coming through Instagram at this point or LinkedIn or Facebook, but they're prospecting socially. So I can, I can really scale that business now because I can keep bringing in people, train them on the business. They understand social, they understand technology and scale the business out that way. So I've almost completely over the last six months pivoted that way. And, but it took me a couple of months to realize that that was the way to go and it had to reveal itself to me, which it did. So, and you're, you're pretty heavy. You do different commercial and residential, but on the residential side, you're probably doing a fair amount of business, correct? Yeah, I'm, so I'm probably 80, 20 residential still. Okay. So we do have realtors check out the show, entrepreneurs in the space, if you will. The, the billion dollar question right now is, you know, it's like going to pay Zillow 2000 a month and you got realtor.com, they're charging it for a seat and all this stuff adds up. And, you know, and it's easier said than done to create your own content. But what I'm getting at is I was, you know, I, I, I stayed away from doing direct marketing for brokerages and real estate agents. Not that we couldn't, we'd crush it, but we were too much money for them because it was like, they didn't have the cash because they had nothing left because of all the expensive SaaS models. Yeah. So, so when, when do you recommend somebody, you know what, let me do a SaaS model. Let me pay the uh, Zillow or whatever and all these things and when not to follow the SaaS model and when to do it yourself. Yeah, so you're hundred percent right about the marketing. It becomes too expensive because most of these realtors, for instance, are all self-employed. Right. Nobody's contributing they're on their own, and especially if they're new, it's hard to do it. So, I always recommend to realtors the first thing they should do is find a niche, whatever that niche is. That niche could be I want to be the number one realtor in Bergen County or Edgewater or wherever. And like, find a niche and become the expert on that. When you start to fill yourself up with business on that, then expand that to the next town. As far as social goals with that. You have to continuously put up content, whatever it is. I don't care what it is. You got to put up content that shows that you are an expert on whatever you, you could be an expert on a block, but be the expert on that block on social media. So if somebody's ever interested in that block, they come check you out. And then again, start expanding as you go. When you get to the point where you're starting to drive business through social and it's enough business where you're busy, then you know it's time to start investing more money in it. And you, you know better than anybody, branding is something that you can't see right. the, the, the dollars immediately. And that's hard to explain to people, but I think that you can do it as a groundswell first where it's just you and you're organically doing it through whatever you're doing it. At some point, you're going to want your content to advance. And that's when you bring somebody like you in or an expert in that says, Hey, I can get your content to a different level. Let's do it differently. Let's do something. But you have to find a niche on your own first, I think. And just own something, own your neighborhood, own where you were from, own Airbnb strategy, own multifamily strategy, own something and become really, really competitive at it and then kind of move to the th next thing. And I think with when I'm choosing niches, I want to stay away from a red ocean. And what I mean by a red ocean is that a red ocean is where there's a million sharks in there, right? And you, you heard this before, right? So I want to be in the blue sea, right? I want to be somewhere where I'm not competing against Amazon, like I'm competing against somebody who I can compete against. So Stay, I'm not going to be a new agent and go into the luxury market. It doesn't make any sense. But be a new agent and own the town that you were from. That's all you have to do. Be great in the town you were from and then expand out from there. So, so the learning there is to follow the blue ocean strategy where you could charge whatever you want. You'd be more of a value add. And who knows? You could be the condo person in Hoboken for under 600K. You know, I don't have to find that. But, but yeah, yeah and that, that's your niche, right? Affordable condos still... Uh, be able to be found on the Gulf Coast. So there's many different ways to swing that. So one, one thing that I have to ask, and this is probably a learning for me, because we always learn from each other, is um, I'm, 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 I'm doing a better job of staying away from the shiny object syndrome and the shiny objects. However, though, I do do a lot of different things, but the stuff that's sexier and funner are less profitable. Or, you know, like the, like the, like the podcast and other stuff, you know, I do this all day. But I'm yeah. broke, right? But you have your hats in a lot of different stuff, and I know you always make everything successful. However, how do you not go down the rabbit hole of like doing all the content for disruptors, doing all your seminars, doing everything else, and then all of a sudden, three months, you're down 17 percent, and you lost 400k. Like, how do you? I, I want to know how Ralph does because I think you do it well, and you probably had some mistakes, but I think you do it well. And what's your advice to myself and other listeners? So definitely a lot of mistakes is where how I got here again. But it's usually my, my stream. But so like I'll bring up the seminars, for instance. I was doing all these live events and we started to get good at the presentation of them, right? So the last one we did um, in January or February was we did a, a film festival for realtors. And I had 
all these special films made and one was about me and one was about people around me and one was about I made all these people there and I brought these people in. It was just, it had R, it was just great night. And at the end of the night, I felt completely empty. And, I, and, I, and the reason being is that how are we monetizing this? Like how are we turning these people who came to our event in, into money? And I started to realize that it's great. This is great, but I'm not a party planner. So, so how do I start to, to go, down, go down a road that makes sense? So I think with that, it, it's, it's figure out, like I should have asked my question that, myself that question day one, but I didn't. So how am I going to monetize this? So even like the show that I'm building out right now, it's all self-funded. It's going to be expensive up front. So I had to, what I first did is came up with a plan. How am I going to monetize this on the back end? And some of it I can't see because some of it is driving business into my social. And, I'm going to, and then I'm going to have people mind. But I'll give you something that has worked for me. Um, so I started this Disruptors Network. Um, well, during the pandemic, I started to do this once a week or once every two weeks webinar where I was keeping everybody updated in the market. And everybody was home, so it was great. So everybody was signing in. I turned out at the Disruptors Network where I'm having um, a high level speaker on once a month talking about either real estate, branding, um, or sales strategies. Yeah. And I do it really for free. I market the crap out of it. I get as many people on as I can. And we'll have between 250 and 350 people come on. So it's great. And then, so how do I monetize that? So after that, my, my team, Vicky, led by Vicky, gets on gets on the, who you know, gets on the, the list of the people that signed up. They reach out to everybody and say, hey, did you like what we presented? What did you like about, what did you like about it? By the way, what do you do for a living? You know, so we gave them all this free information now. And it's like, oh, okay, well, and most of the people are in real estate or around real estate that are following me. Um, okay, well, what's your capacity real estate? Are you a buyer? Are you a seller? Are you an agent? And at that point, we set up calls with like, hey, let's set up a call so we can explain to you what we do on a daily basis and how we can help you. And that's been really, really powerful for me. And that's when I came back to you and said, this is how I'm kind of going completely virtual at this point now. So my job at the top end is to drive everybody into a room. Yeah. And then my team's job is to speak to those people and how do we grow business together? And that's what I'm really doing now. Now, now I want to make sure I, I drive it home. Are you, from the, from the strategy perspective, are you offering them a freemium model? Like once I go to your course, I could pay you a few bucks and, and you mentor me, or are you trying to get them to maybe be a, a refer you for lending or refer you for? Yeah. How, how are you monetizing? Because you got to run it to the goal line, but I want to punch it in. So I have three different revenue streams. It's either mortgage, real estate, or my, the media company, which they do video and content for people. So each person fits into one of those three categories, and those are the three things I'm pushing. So I mean, they're going one way or the other, but it's all streams that I, that I monetize all. And the, and the idea is like, look, these are the high level people that are my friends that are in my network. This is why you want to do business with me. This is what we do on a daily basis. This is how we can help you. And, and then they go into one of those revenue streams. Got it. Now, how do you not get tempted because you did a really good job with your own? Like, so this is just I'm going to take a pause for a second. Everybody who wants to create their own personal brand, it's fucking expensive. You need a graphic designer available. You need, you know, an SEO person to get you to rank. You need a writer to write the stuff, the SEO to get the stuff to rank. You need a half decent social media person to deal with the posts that you post yourself. And you're talking to four, a, 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 four, a, a team of four or five people and on the low end, and this is out of pocket without even having an agency, two to three grand a month. And like, you're not making any money. You're getting likes and, and shares, right? So, so, so you've done it really well. Thank you. On your own personal brand. How did you not get sucked into becoming an agency? Like, like, cause I, cause you, like, you could probably charge five grand a month to build somebody's grand brand, have 20 people, 30 people crush it, but it's, but it's not your core. So how did you, how did you not get sucked into that to do that for other people? So it was the thought at some point that we, like as, as real estate, the stuff that kind of grew, we were like, Hey, I think this could be a, a, a media agency or, a, you know, a market. And um, it's exactly what you said. It wasn't what I was, I, I've made a lot of mistakes starting businesses that it wasn't my expertise that I wasn't great at. So you're right. It was my own personal brand, but, I'm willing to spend the money. Not everybody's willing to spend the money. And that's what I started to find. So, it, it, I, you know, I was like, I'm not ready. I, I would have to really go with this 100% to really do it the right way. And I, I knew I couldn't do that. So I stayed in my lane and I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'll be the branding guy in my business, but I'll use it to bring people to me so I can, I can, I can do business with them in a different way. And, and, and that, that was really my thing is like, if I can't give it 100%, and, I, and, and Tom, I've been down this road, I know you have, where I've started businesses where I was like, I'm going to be an investor or I'm going to be an advisor. And when I wasn't involved every single day, I just became frustrated. The businesses were unsuccessful and I made a lot of mistakes. And I felt like with the media agency, that was going to be my handicap. So it kept me from doing it. Got it. 
Now, now you, you've historically have been very good about um, PR, um, getting PR. Uh, you had some representation. You did some yourself. That, I, I like how you do it. You're doing a lot more own media. We're creating your own content now. Now you're investing <laughs> big into own media, but I'm talking more in terms of the personal brand. So you believe in own media, kind of probably shifting your resources there. When, when should you um, hire a PR firm or a small agency? And when should you maybe do it yourself and pitch, pitch yourself? Like, I want to give, I want to share your advice on looking back as an expert now. Yeah. So, so I actually have a, I have a really good answer to that. So when I first met you, I had a PR agency. They were putting yeah. new channels and stuff like that. And what I realized about that, which is what probably you realized about it, is that they would call me up the morning of a, of a news story. They'd be like, hey, we need you to talk about real estate in North Jersey today. And we need you here in an hour and a half. You need to send us notes. And then you need to come and bring this, this, and this with you. And I'd be like, bring I, your guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was running around all day to get there, to give them the story. And what I realized about the reporters is that they were under the same pressures. They were like, you know, we have to have the story written now. We have to be back in there. And then we have to go on Facebook Live and Instagram Live to talk about it on top of this. So it was just, I was like, this doesn't make any sense so what i started doing i was like i'm gonna write the stories for myself i'm gonna put them on my own website and then i started so and that was homequalified.com and that's how i started doing it so I started making these stories I, and all i did it was really simple i went i had flipboard set up i had apple news set up and i would go through stuff that made sense to me i would reposition it towards what i was thinking about it I would then do a short video on it that on my own with self camera and have somebody edit for me. I would put it on my website and, and then I would I went on LinkedIn and I started looking up reporters because they needed content as bad as I needed content. I said, hey, writing I'm an expert on this. Check out my video. If you ever need me to quote on anything, please reach out to me. And I started to grow up a following of, of these blog writers or reporters that needed me to quote on stuff. And it really worked. It was a lot of work, but I was, at least I was building something that was my own and I wasn't writing somebody else's story for them. And maybe somebody saw it, maybe somebody didn't see it, but I wasn't really getting what I needed out of it. So I really just thought I repositioned it in house. I like that. And, 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 and so, so just a learning there is, and don't get me wrong, like I'm, we deal with PR agencies and I get pitched every day and I don't want to say don't use one, but it, it comes a time versus money proposition. Like when you start out and you have a big budget, do exactly what Ralph said. He just gave you a goal, by the way, Flipboard, LinkedIn publishing, own media, own media for those who don't know, that's you create content. You may put it on another platform like LinkedIn, but you own that content and you get it out there. Earn media is when somebody pitches you and then paid media is, you know, paid ads. So, 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 so I see how you kind of took your own media to get earned media um, what do you do about paid media? What, you know, tell us about P your PPC, uh, uh, pay for play PR, like your, your actual cash for ads, PR, etc. Talk, walk us through that. Stuff I've been doing recently, um, and I'm and I'm feeling my way through this still. So I'm on the Forbes Real Estate Council, which is a paid for council for anyone. I do the same thing, yeah. For yes. one it, it, I write article. I try to write at least one article a quarter. But sometimes I write more than that, and that helps really my rankings on Google. And then I'll, I'll run. I'll run ad, when I get the, ad, the the articles up. All the press I get quoted in at this point, I reposition to my 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 website. I do email campaigns around it, and then I'll do paid ads around that. So I'm repositioning the stuff that I'm writing for some other people, and I'm I'm doing it that way. So that's still working for me. Um, what I've learned about Instagram um, and TikTok and all the other stuff that's going on right now is that specifically Instagram, and I'll speak to that real quick. Yeah, please. It's very hard to grow organically on Instagram at this point. They've changed the algorithm so you can't grow organically on Instagram anymore. Yep. So um, the best thing I can give people right now, and I hired a company to help me with this, and yep. they're young kids and they're great, are these giveaways. The loops, yep. We love the loops. Yeah, so, so they, I did a giveaway. And just to give people an example, I did a giveaway the name of the company is High Key Cloud, and I'll give them a shout out, but they do these big celebrity giveaways. And the giveaway is essentially really simple. They gave away a Tesla. They said, if you want to enter for the Tesla, go follow everybody that's on our page. And, th and, that's, and that helped me grow my following. And maybe it's not followers that are actually engaging in my content, and that was always my gripe, but it, it pushes me up the social ranking. So my stuff, see, you see my stuff before you see other people's stuff. You see my story before you see other people's stuff. So that's the new thing. And what I can tell you about social media in general is whatever is new, like if Instagram, like I'll use Reels, for instance, Instagram put out Reels. Yeah. They put out new, new, um, new promotions or whatever they're doing. 
use it immediately because if you notice you get a lot more views on reels than you get on your own videos because it's new for them and they're pushing the algorithm so just stay in front of the things they're pushing and i don't know if anybody noticed but they started something yesterday i think is gonna uh try to go after clubhouse which yeah. is like the, room, the rooms i don't have a room yet too yeah I, I didn't do it yet but it looks like like you can do 50 people in a room at a time and i think that if you're listening to this, Rooms is brand new, go use Rooms. Because I guarantee you'll be able to attract people through that because it's, it's an initiative that they want to push and you have to be on their team to kind of get up the, get the algorithm going. So I'm not in Rooms yet. Do you have to um, get selected or do you have to update maybe? Or do you know anything about that? Somewhere you, you, I saw it yesterday, Tom, and now today I don't see it. So I don't, I don't know who knows like what they're doing, but if you ever, if you can see it or when you can see it, I would suggest using it because I, I'm sure it'll be useful for the time being. But you have to learn how to play the game essentially, which is what I'm I'm trying to get better at. Are you are you on Clubhouse yet? I'm on Clubhouse. Yeah, um, that's a whole different. Uh, <laughs> so I've been on it for somebody put me onto it about a month and a half ago. Yeah. Um, I went in and I started participating. I got in rooms and got on stages. The problem I'm finding with it now is that. I see the people that are on and I get the notifications. These people, are, they're on all day. So when are they doing the things that they say they're so successful at is my next question. So I, I, I have a complicated relationship with it so far. I haven't fully embraced it. I'm trying to, but it's a good place to meet people for sure. So, so, cause you have, you have a few different business and we'll get into the, the legal tax portion of it, but, yeah. but in terms of you have different business, I guess, line items or pillars, right? And do you centralize like, hey, I have a core social media group or I got a core content group, I got core video group, and do they service your three line items or is your marketing decentralized under each pillar? So I always wonder kind of how you balance that out. Um, so I, I, everything really feeds through my main, my personal main page because okay. now, and, and I have pages for everything else, but everything kind of feeds through my personal page because I found that no matter what you do, people want a personal relationship. Yeah. They personally know you, you know, they don't want to follow a brand. They want to be involved with you. So I really think personally, you have to put, push everything through your brand. Ryan Sarkin is the biggest realtor in the world. He's got all these other things, but everything really he pushes through his own personal page. So um, I try to push everything to my personal page. And then I have the ancillary companies and they have their own pages and people do follow them. But I try to push through my own page and then put unique content on those pages that I promote through my page. What's something that you're going to invest in more of in 2021 and what's something you'd probably best in less of in 2021? So that's a, that's a really good question. So what I've been looking at this week more than anything, and, and the show kind of made me think of it, anybody wants to do advertising, yeah. um, I really kind of got obsessed with this OTT, OTT marketing. I love OTT. Yeah, so, I, so I'm, I'm doing as much research as I can on that. And that's basically ads through the streaming platforms, essentially, right? And that's how I understand it. It's paid ads through the streaming platforms. And I think, I personally think that it's very undervalued at this point now, because if you look at the cost of it compared to a radio ad or a television ad or anything like that, it's a lot, a lot cheaper. Right. So um, I'm really going to invest in that a lot in 2021. I think, I think that's going to be my main spend when, I, when I'm really going to spend money is on OTT uh, marketing. Now, because you're getting more and more into video, and it's kind of funny because my podcast and, 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 and when I first had Ralph on, I did it from like a shore house down the shore. Uh, and it was audio only and it did, it did quite well, but now I kind of, and I'm not like, as you could tell, I'm not like super into the glass, <laughs> the, the, the glam, but, but nevertheless, I now have a YouTube channel and YouTube now makes up for 75% of our streams. It's not really a really big monetization point, but it's part of the brand build, right? Cause that's one of those things, YouTube's a love hate relationship, right? You need it and you get a ton of business from it. Right. But like, you know, like a hundred thousand views and you make 300 bucks. It's like, eh. so my question is, are you going to put your show, you know, on YouTube, right? Cause I know you're putting different streams a and number two, give me your relationship with YouTube right now and where that fits into the whole thing. Yes. Yeah, so it's definitely going to be on YouTube and I have to make more of a commitment to it. Um, and I think that if people don't stay committed to YouTube because it's hard, like, you know, it's hard to get a lot of followers on there. It's hard to get people to really plug into your content. It, it's hard. I think, People get discouraged very, very easily. And, and you can include me in that category that I've got. I have a YouTube channel. Um, I have a lot of content up on there, but I, I haven't done enough to push it. And I think with the show, with OTT marketing and all that stuff, I'm going to do a lot more to push that channel because I think that that 
ultimately that's where you're going to find the, the best audience that really engages in your content. Like, you know, for you, I'm sure it's easy for people to click on Instagram, click on Facebook, but the truth of the matter is, is your real audience is probably on YouTube. Yeah. You probably have a really good audience on there because you stayed committed to it. So I think for anybody listening, I think I have to make more of a commitment there and I think everybody should. Okay. So, so where are you, where are you going to take some chips off the table and, and, and invest less of in 2021? So, so I, I'm sure you're reading this stuff and, and um, all these, these targeted Facebook ads and all the ads that are going through that, that they're going to start like really policing and regulating now um, that they're saying they're really going to regulate that stuff. I think that's where I'm, I wasn't having a lot of luck with it anyway, to be totally honest on the real estate mortgage. So I wasn't, I, and, and, I, yeah, and, and Tom, I've spent, you want to hear a failure. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on those ads and my return on the money for that is not where it needs to be. So it's going to stop being regulated more. So it's giving me even more of an excuse not to do it anymore. Yeah. I think that's where I'm taking my money away from the, the ads through Instagram and Facebook that are, are based off of people's preferences and stuff like that are going to start to get regulated more. And I think we're going to have to find a different way to draw people in because I think that's going to get harder and harder. So I'm going to be taking money away from that for sure. All right. So one of the key learnings here is, and, and the next level thinkers already concluded this, you have your kind of big three, you got Facebook, you know, you got Google. Um, and then the third, you know, I, and I, I, Instagram, you know, I'll say two, it's Facebook, which is Instagram and Google, everything else is a far second, or sorry, third place and so forth to invest in paid ads or to get your message out. Right. So one of the key things right now, and then you create your own content and then they like kind of force you with the algorithm to either buy ads or create so much content that like it's it's almost cost prohibitive because content still costs you money. But one of the things I'm, I'm learning from you right now is that you're gonna take your, a little bit of money off the paid ad push, put it into my own media, use a little OTT and other stuff because it may be cheaper to get that eyeball. It may be less expensive to get that click through. And then also you're gonna, in the worst case scenario, you at least own the content and then it's out there. And then you could always, worst case scenario, buy the ads if it doesn't work, right? So I, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. And just to give somebody perspective, if you want to get your name out there, and I'm just throwing numbers out, but like it used to be, you can get a click on, on Facebook for one to three cents. You can get a video for five to eight cents. Now, like 14 cents, like it's not cost. Yeah. And then you charge ads on your platform or you have a SaaS model. And then you kind of either don't make money on it and you got to raise money for your customers. So you're definitely down, definitely down the, um, the right path. So it seems like your passion is, tell us about the show that you did. And, and before we conclude, tell us about the show that you're going to do, uh, Rob. So um, I used to be on a show, but uh, I was on a show by the name of American Dream, which is like a national real estate based show. And they kind of like highlight properties and areas. And it's, it's, it's good. It's pretty cookie cutter, but it's a real estate based reality show. It's called American Dream and it streams on all the platforms. What I realized from what they were doing streaming is that I could really stream my own show. And back to what you said, like I want to own my content because then I can repurpose it everywhere. It's I own it in one area and then I can use it to do a million different things. So I'm going to be streaming my own show. I saw the deal to stream my own show. It's called the Disruptors Network. It's going to pre, it's going to premiere in February and it's going to be on all the, the big platforms. So Roku, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, YouTube TV, and it's going to highlight entrepreneurs that are making a difference, like I said before. So, you know, I, I decided to, to, to take back my content like I've always done and the theme for me is go learn from somebody else, see what the mistakes are, see where I'm messing up, and then try to do it on my own. I don't ever try to do it on my own first. I kind of want to learn from people. And I learned a lot from American Dream, and now I'm trying to do it on my own. I love it. So we're going to put, obviously, a link to your website, link to your Instagram. Um, again, you know, it's like Ralph and I could talk for hours, but I think you got the core of, you know, what, what to do now, where to go, how to pivot, where to invest, where to maybe invest a little less. And then Ralph, as always, um, um, Thanks for coming on the show. For those that are listening, so we still have a decent amount of listenership. Uh, how can people find you? Um, so, but my Instagram right now is at debug at D I B U G. It's a great way to find it. Um, and then um, the real disruptors.com is the website. Um, we're going to have an app on there, but it's going to, it's going to, the disruptors network is going to be the show. It's going to stream on all the services. So if you stream, if you Google disruptors network anywhere, you're going to find it. Um, and on, on, on YouTube, disruptors network, if you put it in, it, it'll be there. I love it. Ralph, thank you for being on the show and uh, we'll put the links below. All right. Thank you so much.